Today I'm going to show you how to build a lithium ion spot welder. If you're new to this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. All main parts will be linked in the description and let's get started. If you've ever attempted to modify or build a battery pack, then you might be familiar with the two main methods out there used to join the cells. The first one, a simplest one, is soldering, which is quite time consuming and I do not recommend it since lithium ion batteries tend to go on fire when exposed to heat. The second option is to use a spot welder which basically provides a short pulse of high current which then converts it into concentrated heat, thus effectively welding the nickel strip onto the battery. For the source of high current, we'll be using a microwave which houses a special component, a transformer. The beauty about this transformer is that it's very large which means it has the capability to transfer a large amount of power. Now even if the microwave appears to be broken, just consider one thing. Usually, the first component that breaks in a microwave is the magnetron and if the transformer ever gets damaged, it always ends up being the secondary coil, which we won't be using in this project. Anyway, I started by cutting the top of the transformer in order to get to the coil. Then, I'll place the transformer between two solid pieces of metal and hit the core until it lets go of the coils. We have to remove the secondary coil since we'll be winding a new one. Now it appears to be that the transformer's core fell apart, but we can fix that with a little help from a welder. Now that the transformer is once again intact, we can move on to rewinding the secondary coil. For that, I'll be using a 15 foot 14 gauge extension cord. My plan is to combine the three wires to in theory get a 4.6 gauge cable. The total windings of this transformer will be 3 turns which should give us between 3 volts and 5 volts. Now, we'll push on the primary coil and then put back the top core and then tack weld it in place before testing it. Oh, I forgot to shut the smoke alarm. If you don't already know, I built this device in a previous video, so check it out if you're interested in how it was made. After finishing the welds, we can move on to connecting a power cord that I salvaged from the microwave and hook it up to an electrical outlet. When measuring the output voltage from the transformer, it reads 3.6 volts, which is acceptable, but it still makes quite a loud humming sound. So, I put the transformer down on the ground to finish the weld. Now that it's done, I put it back on the table, shorted the two output cables and connected a current clamp to measure the maximum current. And as you can see, we got a short circuit current of 493 amps, which I think should be enough, plus the humming sound is gone. When using a spot welder, you want to apply a high current to the pins for a short amount of time. For that, I put together a prototype Arduino based circuit. This circuit allows me to set the pulse time from as low as 5 milliseconds up to 255 milliseconds. It also comes with a trigger button which will trigger a buzzer for the set amount of time. Later on, we'll build the circuit on a circuit board, only then we'll connect the buzzer pin to a relay, which I salvaged from a microwave, once again, which will ultimately power the transformer. When looking at the main section of the code, we can see the lines that tell the Arduino how to use the plus and minus buttons, the lines that tell the Arduino how to use the trigger pin and buzzer pin, and finally, the lines that tell the Arduino what to show on the display. Now that we know how it works, it's time to put the circuit on a circuit board. While building the circuit, I'm installing a 20 amp fuse which will be later connected in series with the relay's output. I will also be installing some female headers to make the connecting and disconnecting from the low voltage wires way easier. Now, we'll secure all the components in place. 
and after one hour of soldering, the circuit board is finally complete. The final component we'll need is a power supply. I grabbed a 12 volt power supply instead of a 5 volt since it will have to power a 12 volt relay. Plus, the Arduino has an onboard voltage regulator which means it has the ability to be powered with a higher voltage than 5 volts. We'll crack it out of its shell since it's easier to work with and it takes up much less space. But before moving forward, we must make sure that everything works as it should. For that, I'll connect the buttons and display and hook up power to the circuit board. Well... It works. And when I short the trigger pin with a screwdriver, we can hear both the buzzer and relay turn on for a split second. Perfect. So now, we can move on to 3D printing a enclosure. After almost 3 days of printing, the enclosure is finally done. Now, we'll just get rid of the support... And it's done! Before installing the components in the enclosure, I'll set up my 3D printer to print a handle. It looks like it's gonna take 2 hours and 50 minutes, which means by the time all the components are installed, the handle should be done printing. Perfect! We'll start by installing the transformer. I'll use some bolts that match the threads from the transformer's mounting plate, together with some rubber anti-vibration pads which will both help with grip and it will act as a washer. Next, I'll install the power cord by inserting it into the slot from the enclosure. Then, we'll install the cable glands, the power switch and finally the buttons and display using some hot glue. If you're wondering what kind of buttons I'm using then they are capacitive buttons which means you can mount them inside of an enclosure and it will still be able to sense your touch. Pretty cool right? To keep the transformer cool I'll add a PC fan. I'll add a hole to the enclosure to be able to install a port which will trigger a pulse. Now, I'll just finish up the wiring and mount both the power supply and control board onto the wall. Next, we'll tidy up the wiring and as I mentioned before, the handle is now done printing. So, we'll go ahead and install it. Since everything is in place, we can finally close it all up. I'll use coarse threaded screws since fine threaded screws do not work well with plastic. For the welding tip, I'll use this welding pen which doesn't only give you the ability to replace the tips, but it also comes with a built-in switch which makes the welding way easier. To connect the welding pen to the spot welder, I'll use a chopped L bracket and solder it onto the cable. Now, we'll bolt down the cables and heat up the shrink tubes. To keep the cables organized, I'll zip tie them to each other and then plug in the trigger wire. If you're wondering why I'm installing a port instead of using a straight wire, is because I wanted to have the option of triggering the pulse using a foot pedal. The final touch-ups I'll add is two stickers to indicate the location of the plus and minus button. And now that it's done, it's time to give it a test. For the first test, I'll try to weld a nickel strip onto a 18650 battery. Well guys, it does not seem to work even if I bump up the pulse time to its maximum value. But the question is, is this project a failure? I don't think so, because after looking through my scrap collection, I found a spare welding cable which is slightly thicker than the old one. So I'll take it apart, remove the power cable and just skip to the part where it's already installed. And now, I'll try again to weld a nickel strip onto the battery. And... It works! What a clean weld! The success inspired me to put together a small two-cell battery pack. Nice and solid. And when I connect a multimeter, it measures 8 volts. 
Perfect. Now before this video comes to an end, I do want to mention that I've already built a similar spot welder about 3 years ago, before my YouTube channel has been around. So I wanted you to know that I've mainly built it for you guys to enjoy. So if you like this project, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next video.